Group 13A project. Washer and dryer manufacturer. Managerial accounting is an integral part of any business. All companies must pay close attention to their financial aspects, as most of their goals are to make as much money and profit as possible, and managerial accounting is one of the most useful tools to accomplish that goal. Financial analysis is the process of identifying, measuring, analyzing, and communicating financial information to make decisions and keep a company's performance on track. Some companies, as in this case study, may hire external consulting firms to maintain financial management roles and provide feedback as needed. The client is a global washer and dryer manufacturer with two core sets of products, a high-end model and an economical set. In this case study, we evaluate and analyze the financial data provided, present our findings, and make recommendations to management. Part 1, Cost Analysis a washer and dryer manufacturer that makes two products, a high-end set and an economical set, needs some budgeting information so they can make decisions about sales goals. They provided revenue and cost information, and they have asked for the following. Contribution margins for both products, break-even quantities for both products, break-even quantity with a target profit of $500,000 per year for the high-end line, same as sales price, break-even quantity with a target profit of $300,000 per year for the economical line, same sales price. The first step in the cost analysis is to find the total variable costs by adding labor and materials. Here we have $2,275 for the total variable cost per unit. Step two, find the total fixed cost per month by adding the direct and allocated fixed costs for $110,000 per month. Step three, find the total fixed cost per year by multiplying the total fixed cost per month by 12 months for $1,320,000. Step four, calculate the contribution margin by subtracting variable cost per unit from the selling price per unit for $1,225 per unit. Step five, calculate the contribution margin ratio by dividing the contribution margin by the selling price per unit for 35%. Step six, calculate the break-even sales in units by dividing the total fixed cost per year by the contribution margin for 1,077.55 units. Step seven, calculate the break-even in sales per year by dividing the total fixed cost per year by the contribution margin ratio for $3,771,428.57 per year. Step eight, calculate the break-even in sales per month by dividing the break-even in sales per year by 12 months for $314,285.71 per month. Step nine, calculate break-even target units by adding the total fixed cost per year plus the target profit, then dividing by the contribution margin for 1,485.71 units. Next, we do the same calculations for the economical set. Steps 10 through 12 for the economical set are the same as for the high-end set. These steps gave us the values of a total variable cost per unit of $550, total fixed cost per month of $101,500, and total fixed cost per year of $1,218,000. Steps 13 through 18 are again the same for the economical set as for the high-end set. For the economical set, our calculations gave us a contribution margin ratio of $450 per unit, contribution margin ratio of 45%, break-even in units of 2,706.67 units, break-even in sales, $225,555.56, break-even sales per year, $2,706,666.67, and a break-even with a target of $300,000 of 3,817.78 units. Evaluation. The contribution margin is the remaining revenue after deducting variable costs from sales. It contributes to covering fixed costs and operating costs. At $1,225, the contribution margin of the high-end set is greater than the economical set at $450. 
Therefore, the high-end set contributes more toward covering the fixed and operating costs than the economical set. However, the economical set costs far less to manufacture. The contribution margin ratio is the percentage of sales price that contributes to fixed and operating costs. The economical set contributes 45% of its sales price toward other costs than the high-end set, which is 35%. However, the smaller proportion that the high-end set contributes is equal to a far greater amount of money. The break-even quantity is the minimum number of units the company needs to sell to achieve zero profit. The break-even quantity for the high-end set is 1,078 units and 2,707 units for the economical set. Based on the break-even quantity, the high-end set is more profitable because the company would need to sell far fewer of these than they would the economical set before they make a profit. The break-even quantity with a target profit is the number of units that must be sold to cover all costs and achieve a certain profit. To achieve a profit of $500,000, the company must sell 1,486 high-end sets. To reach $300,000, they must sell 3,818 economical sets. With a greater target profit and fewer units to sell to reach that profit, the high-end set is more profitable to the company than the economical set, even considering the cost of manufacturing. Part 2, Capital Budgeting. The same company is thinking about buying equipment so they can start making a new line of combination washer dryers and they want a five-year analysis for the project. They provided values for initial investment, sales price, variable and fixed costs, cost of capital, rate of return, projected sales, and break-even points. They have asked for the following, contribution margin, break-even quantity, net present value, internal rate of return. The first step is to calculate the total variable costs which is found by adding the labor and materials, in this case, for a total of $1,390. Step two, calculate the total fixed cost per year by multiplying the total fixed cost per month by 12 months for a total of $249,000. Step three, calculate the contribution margin by subtracting the variable cost per unit from the sales price per unit for a total of $860. Step four, calculate the contribution margin ratio by dividing the contribution margin by the sales price per unit for 38%. Step five, calculate the break-even sales in units by dividing the total fixed cost per year by the contribution margin for 290 units. Step six, calculate the break-even sales per year by dividing the total fixed cost per year by the contribution margin ratio for $651,453.49. Step seven, the sales in units for year one is found by multiplying the break-even sales in units by 55% for 159.42 units. Step eight, calculate the sales for year one by multiplying the sales in units by the selling price per unit for $358,299.42. Step nine, calculate the variable costs by multiplying the sales units by the variable cost per unit for $249,000. Step 10, calculate the cash flow for year one by adding the sales, variable, and fixed costs for a total of $112,050. Step 11, for year two, calculate sales by multiplying the break-even point by the sales price per unit for $651,453.49. Step 12, calculate the variable cost for year two by multiplying the sales in units by the variable cost per unit for $402,453.49. Step 13, Calculate the cash flow for year two by adding the sales, variable, and fixed costs for $249,000. Year three sales are found by multiplying year two sales by 10% and then adding year two sales for $716,598.84. Step 15. Year three variable costs are found by multiplying year two variable costs by 2% and then adding year two variable costs for $410,502.56. Step 16, year three cash flow is found by adding sales, variable, and fixed costs for 
$57,096.28. Year 4 sales are found by multiplying year 3 sales by 15%, then adding year 3 sales for $824,088.66. Step 18. Year 4 variable costs are found by multiplying year 3 variable costs by 2% and then adding year 3 variable costs for $418,712.61. Step 19. Year 4 cash flow is found by adding sales, variable, and fixed costs for $156,376.06. Step 20. Year 5 sales are found by multiplying year 4 sales by 20% then adding year four sales for $988,906.40. Step 21, year five variable costs are found by multiplying year four variable costs by 2%, then adding year four variable costs for $427,086.86. Step 22, year five cash flow is found by adding sales, variable, and fixed costs for $312,819.54. Step 22, calculate the payback period. This is found by finding out which year break even in sales will occur. In the case of the combination washer dryer, the payback period is two years. Step 24, the net present value is found by using an Excel spreadsheet and entering the formula shown below for a total of $119,415.66. Step 25, internal rate of return is found by using an Excel spreadsheet and entering the formula below for 19%. The contribution margin for the combination washer dryer is $860, which is a positive number indicating that the product will contribute toward the other cost of manufacturing and make a profit for the company. The break-even quantity is 290 units, so the company will only have to sell this many to begin earning a profit on this product line. Net present value is the process of assessing long-term investments by calculating the sum of the present value of all cash inflows and outflows. The NPV rule states that if NPV is greater than or equal to zero, the investment should be accepted. If it's less than zero, it should be rejected. Based on this rule, management should invest in the combination washer-dryer because the NPV is greater than zero, at $119,415.66. Internal rate of return is the rate that is required to achieve zero NPV for cash flows over a set number of years. It's a financial analysis tool that helps a company decide if a potential investment will be profitable and provides the rate of return for an investment after accounting for the present value of money. To find the IRR, you can use trial and error or a spreadsheet formula. The IRR rule states that if the IRR is greater than or equal to the company's required rate of return, the investment is acceptable. Otherwise, the investment should be rejected. Management should invest in the combination washer and dryer because the IRR is 19%, which is greater than the company's required rate of return of 10%. Conclusion. These analyses support the decision of management to invest in the combination washer and dryer. The contribution margin is positive, the break-even in units is low, the net present value is high and the internal rate of return is nearly twice the required rate of return. All these values indicate that the investment will be profitable. There are other factors that should be considered in addition to the financial analysis tools described above. Has management conducted any market research to find out if enough people are interested in purchasing a combination unit? How many houses are currently in existence or under construction that have the required type of hookups for the combination unit? How much will the new manufacturing equipment cost and what is the lifespan of the equipment? What is the scope of specialized training required to manufacture the new equipment, and will the company be able to find or train the necessary employees? What is the quality of the combination unit, and how will it compare to the company's current products? These are all important questions to consider prior to making any large investment. Part 3, Differential Analysis. After the company has been producing the combination washer-dryer for a few years, management requests that we perform another analysis. We must evaluate the performance of all three product lines because management is concerned with the viability of the washer-dryer combination product. They provide us with the latest annual information by product. The first step in a differential analysis is to compare two alternative courses of action. The first alternative is to keep all product lines. Step one, calculate total variable and fixed costs. 
For the high end set, total variable costs are 3135000 The economical, 2235000 washer-dryer combo, 550000 for a total variable cost of 5920000 Total fixed costs for the high end set are 975000 economical set 870000 washer-dryer combo 900000 and total fixed costs on all three lines are $2,745,000. Step two. On a new table, we will first remove the washer-dryer combination values. Step three. Distribute the washer-dryer combo allocated fixed costs evenly among the remaining two product lines. In this case, it was 650,000 divided by two and those amounts of $325,000 each distributed to the high-end and economical sets for a total allocated fixed cost of $975,000 on both lines. Step 4. Calculate the new totals. Sales $8,760,000. Labor $2,265,000. Materials $3,105,000. Total variable costs $5,370,000. Direct fixed costs $545,000. Allocated fixed costs $1,950,000 for a total fixed costs of $2,495,000. The total net income for both lines on the second alternative to drop the washer drive combo line is $895,000. The next part of the differential analysis is to actually do the differential analysis on a new table. Step 5 copy the totals from alternative 1, keep all product lines. In this case, sales $9,640,000, variable cost $5,920,000, fixed cost $2,745,000, and net income $975,000. Step 6. Copy the totals from alternative 2, dropping the washer-dryer combo line. Sales $8,760,000, variable $5,000,000. 370,000 fixed 2,495,000 for a net income of 895,000. Step 7. Subtract alternative 2 totals from alternative 1 totals. The differential amounts in sales are 880,000, variable cost 550,000, fixed cost 250,000, and net income $80,000. Step 8. Determine whether alternative 1 is higher or lower than alternative 2. If the differential amount is positive, then alternative 1 is higher. If it's negative, then alternative uh, 1 is lower. In sales, the alternative 1 is higher, variable costs it's lower, fixed costs it's lower, and net income it's higher. Conclusion. The results of the differential analysis sh show that the company will lose $80,000 in net sales annually if it drops the washer-dryer combination product line. However, their costing method does not provide the most accurate or thorough analysis because much important information is still missing. If we knew the number of products sold annually or the selling general and administrative costs associated with the washer-dryer combo line, such as manager salaries, taxes, and marketing costs, we would be able to provide a better analysis. A better costing method might be a cost volume profit analysis because it would allow us to determine precisely which costs are connected to the product line and which must be absorbed by the other lines. Our recommendation for this company is to keep the washer dryer product line because it will be the most profitable choice in the end.